Well, hello, that's me again, and uh, it is um, April 21, 2022, and we have some things to discuss today, and I will start with the, uh, with Mariupol, obviously, uh, because uh, yesterday Vladimir Putin absolutely justifiably stated and gave order, basically, to Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, Sergei Shoigu, not to waste any more lives of um, Russian soldiers and simply seal off the Azov style with whatever or and whoever is left there and the logic of it is perfect. Mariupol is liberated. Azov style is a kind of southernmost uh, uh, end of Mariupol facing the Azov Sea and it is extremely well sealed on both uh, on the seaside and uh, from the ground and the surrender continues there as we speak but the main issue, of course, and that's what makes it so, uh, using Alice in uh, Wonderland, uh, curiouser and curiouser is who really is in there. And everybody, uh, well, any, uh, everybody I know who speak publicly, they ask this question because it's a reasonable one. And the logic is very simple. If uh, Russia uh, takes Azov style by storm, storming it, which is, by the way, yeah, it's possible and it's still going to cost Russia some lives, but inevitably very many people, obviously, w w during the storming of Azov style will be killed on the other side, including somebody who may otherwise be very useful for Russia and who knows who those people are. Again, as I said, um, there, there are all indications and I actually stated pretty much uh, openly and uh, directly by many Russian sources that the plan of this festung, using uh, journal language, uh, was developed by Pentagon. So we might uh, expect some very big NATO people in there, and most likely they are, including probably special services. And in this case, they have the choice, very simple one, now that you're not going to get killed, you know, accidentally or deliberately by Rus uh, Russian troops, uh, which will be storming it, now you have the choice. You either die from hunger and thirst, and or you go out and surrender. So, and uh, that will be very interesting uh, what's going to happen in this case. But for Azov uh, people, Azov Nazis, obviously, there is very uh, little bright prospects there. I mean, they will be uh, obviously subjected to the war crimes tribunal and many will end up um, in some really remote uh, locations or will be executed, uh, especially in Elden Air and Donbass and Luhan, basically Donbass republics, they have their uh, 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 death penalty. Uh, Russia may uh, also, now that Russia really have no connections to European Union or Europe or what, what have you, just simply, you know, cancel its moratorium on the death uh, penalty and execute some of them, you know, on Russian territory. We'll see. This is now a technical question, so the, it's a great decision and, yeah, there's no need to uh, basically uh, waste hum Russian human life. Uh, and especially, we still have to keep in mind that there are some civilians, uh, you know, what the latest info stays, so that could be a chance for them. Unless, of course, and I don't want to be, you know, playful with this because it's a horrible situation, and especially if there are innocent civilians who are taken hostage there, which is the pretty, pretty much modus operandi by of VSU and developed in the NATO staffs, hiding behind the civilians, unless, of course, they go and do, you know, start cannibalism uh, procedures, so to speak, you know, and start eating each other. We don't want to go there, and nobody wants to go there, really. I mean, it's, uh, Russia would have, uh, honestly, a blast, uh, basically uh, uh, putting a judgment and leveling charges against the war criminals there in public space, and it, it's, it's a good publicity, and it's a good, basically, smear of already de degenerating uh, West, which I'll be talking later. But um, even the fact, uh, and especially against the background of Russian advances in the uh, around and inside the cauldron of WSU in Donbass, uh, the tone of media, Western media, not that they scream 
or, or like CNN or there are others, you know, oh, there is only, you know, diplomatic solution and things of this nature to this conflict. No, it is not. I mean, Russia tried. Russia offered diplomatic solutions, but nobody listened. Now it's too late. And yeah, the reason they do this is because the situation for Russia is catastrophic. And uh, I might need to do additional video with graphics actually to describe it. But uh, truth is, uh, it's it's over, guys. I mean, come on. Now they uh, report the removal of the major forces from Odessa. Some of it goes to Nikolaev, which will be taken, uh, or, you know, in coming days, or the storm will start. And some say that they move back into the Western Ukraine. So, well, we'll see. You know, who knows? But there, there is a lot of movement there on part of the VSU trying to escape. And uh, so uh, we will keep an eye on that. But now let's uh, talk a little bit of what yesterday some people on my blog uh, and I posted today uh, uh, relevant uh, relevant post, so to speak, article on uh, on my blog. Posted the video of Alex Christoforo. Uh, they posted it in the discussion board, and um, Alex was lamenting the uh, situation with the European Union. And uh, I want to say a very simple thing. I am on the record for many years for many years that basically studying U Ukraine affair, they really don't know what they were dealing with. I mean, Europeans and the United States. First, they are utterly incompetent. We have to not consider, we have, it's a fact. We know that they are incompetent. We know that many of them are stupid and they are driven not by rational thinking or uh, really uh, professionalism. They are driven by hatreds, you know, all those complexes. And uh, anybody who goes to my blog, they can see today this wonderful uh, uh, guy, uh, psychiatrist and, and psychologist, too, you know, who explains the issue of the narcissism and how narcissists react when they got get figured out by people and they cannot control people anymore. It's a perfect explanation. It's a perfect uh, description of the situation between Russia and uh, the combined West and their, in their relations. But truth is, yeah, they are narcissistic people and oh, the only competence they have is manipulation. And that's when you hear those, uh, you know, and read and hear and watch those mainstream media from Europe or, you know, from the United States. And you, you can see a distinct change of the tone and uh, you know that they understand, or rather not they, I don't give much credence to American journalism and especially mainstream journalism as a whole that much because mostly they are ignorant people. I mean, degree in journalism is not degree. It's not even education. So as pretty much most, not all, but most humanities related things. Uh, so those, uh, uh, as a friend of mine says, he called them soft degrees. Anybody with IQ uh, above room temperature can basically go and get the degree in history or in journalism or what have you. It's easy. That's why people go there. Or let's say political science. It's not even, uh, you know, it's not even science. So, but point is they are utterly incompetent. And they cannot make really uh, professional and competent conclusions on pretty much any affair which is beyond what they usually do, like celebrity rumors, who screws himself in what poses, you know, this political agenda of, uh, uh, you know, multi-gender, transgender thing. That's their, you know, realm. That's their competence. The fashion, yeah, that can do that. And of course, the technology. And by technology, they mean code writing and new uh, smartphones. That's pretty much it. But those people who control them, and uh, those are serious orcs, uh, uh, some people say that Washington Post is the, you know, just straight CIA outlet. I can totally believe it because, I mean, which, by the way, doesn't make uh, CIA look good because the amount of bullshit they print is just unbelievable. So, but uh, there is an understanding, and it's distinct now, you can sense it, that um, the... Uh, this understanding is finally dawning on people, whoever those people behind the curtains are, that it's over, basically. And that is why they scream now for diplomatic solution. But as you may have known and noticed, those people who listen to me or read my blog, and people who follow the events, 
Uh, Dmitry Anatolyevich Medvedev, former Russian president, former Russian prime minister, and now the Secretary of Security Council of Russia, yesterday uh, addressed the issue of both Mariupol and, you know, and all those Europeans and, you know, Westerners trying to this, you know, make this Easter, you know, truth and, you know, just whatever to save their this uh, Azov people and whatever uh, uh, is being surrounded now and annihilated in Ovasu in Donbass. And he quoted uh, uh, very much the, you know, Sun Tzu about, you know, know thy enemy, know thyself. And he stated that, you know what? Uh, no, there will be no Eastern truth. There will be nothing. We know who you are. You know, you are not agreement capable, and especially with Seoul, and especially Nazis. So no, the grind will continue, and we will annihilate them. So that's very much what he says. And by the way, for those people, which also... Uh, testifies to an extremely low level of uh, the field of Russian studies and I have to admit myself uh, I've been uh, kind of duped a little bit uh, that uh, we always thought about Medvedev uh, as a kind of you know pro-western liberal but reality is and people begin to ask the question oh my gosh is this the guy you know who was, was what have you you know uh, this liberal pro-western guy uh, I think so, Medvedev actually is bigger hawk and war hawk than Putin. And truth is, during the uh, Georgian war, where everybody assumed that Vladimir Putin was, uh, uh, you know, commanding things behind the scene, being prime minister then, while Dmitry Medvedev was the president, actually it was Medvedev who gave the order to start the operation, which ended up, you know, breaking up the, uh, breaking up Georgia and annihilating Georgian, uh, Georgian army, and, uh, you know, that was the first kind of signal, first bell for, for the West. He is a bigger, uh, actually, uh, you, you know, no more, no more Mr. Nice Guy type, you know. And we have to remember that Mr. Kudrin, that's the real deal. That's this liberal. That's the fifth and sixth column to, all together. In Russia, he was fired by not Mr. Putin, but by Mr. Medvedev. And at that time, when he threw him out of the government, that was a big deal. That was actually a shock. And that's when it started to dawn on some people. Well, the guy is kind of like not exactly what he looks like. You know, uh, the softy, sometimes very clumsy, not in, both in speech and in movements. And people later, just recently, I uh, read actually responses from people who worked under uh, Medvedev's government. And they say, Oh no, Putin is a, you know what, it's, he's a very nice guy, he's soft and, you know, nice, basically. When you were, you know, doing things and screwing things uh, up and you were at the, in the one room with Medvedev, he would freaking, you know, roll over you and he could be a very nasty guy, you know, in delivering the point when he's really upset. So, yeah, we have to keep in mind that, yeah, Mr. Medvedev is not your pro-Western liberal anymore. I don't think so he ever was, actually. That is why uh, when you look at this uh, uh, exchange of the posts, uh, positions between Putin and Medvedev, uh, uh, and Putin becoming prime minister and Medvedev becoming the president, there is no doubt now anymore that there was a really good friendship and real big trust in each other. And yes, so the guy is, he might be liberal in some uh, view, some economic views, but he is one what it would be called a profound state hoodniks or basically государственник. That means the man who cares about state and he cares about people of the state. And that's a great indication. And the good cop, bad cop thing doesn't work anymore because actually, as I already stated, Medvedev and who knows, they might be preparing him for second term as a president of Russia. He is more war hawk, he is more uh, uh, hothead in many respects than uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, who is a kind of more reasonable one when you deal with him in uh, uh, political, uh, foreign policy especially matters. But this now really doesn't mean much anymore anyhow because the, um, uh, basically Russia gave up on Europe and I mean literally and of course uh, I sp uh, wrote about it today and there is a uh, you can go and I will put it a uh, link to my blog 
uh, below the, this video, so just visit it. I uh, already posted about the uh, absolutely preposterous situation with Europeans behaving like, uh, well, like idiots, you know. And uh, the uh, basically European Commission and uh, uh, International e Energy Agency, they came up with this plan of nine points, which of course tells you, yeah, shower less, don't drive that much, drive with a slower speed, turn down your thermostat, and things of this nature. So, well, eventually, I think, as much as Alex Christopher was lamenting this uh, uh, fact, Europeans did it in the final uh, analysis. Europeans did it to themselves, especially European middle class, this kind of middle-level uh, bourgeois, you know, who thought that they're smarter because they have soft degrees in sociology or marketing or what have you. You have this whole thing, and of course, when you look at this uh, uh, plan uh, of uh, IEA and uh, European Commission, one of the points just literally, you know, basically stands out immediately into your face. It's this point of uh, try to work more uh, from home. Yes, we know farming, working from home in farming or machine building is so easy. You just sit remotely and you produce shit. Pardon my French. So this shows you what imbeciles those people are because the main expenditure of the energy in any developed country comes obviously from the consumer energy which is heat or air conditioning but from the actual manufacturing industries all this office plankton all those free thinkers artists marketologists and economists they are nobody in this thing they are services which consume very little and doesn't matter how much they want to you know work remotely if they can but the reality is you cannot work remotely in aerospace industry in machine building complex in military industrial complex in agriculture in extraction so you pretty much anything which is materially produced and which constitutes the economic life of the nation you cannot work remotely. You have to be 99% of, uh, 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 of the time in cases, you have to be on your working place. You have to do all those things, manipulations ranging from simple manual labor, finishing with the writing G code and applying it on in place on some CNC machining center and do it, doing it in person and checking it and uh, uh, basically trying to do the and run the safety protocols and things of this nature. Even uh, storages, you have to be, well, yeah, you can build some, uh, 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 you know, uh, run by robots, you know, storage facilities, but for the most part, you need people there. As this damn Amazon thing, it literally runs thousands upon thousands of people to the full moral and physical exhaustion, and it runs them at the lines. That's what real economy is. As much as, well, Amazon is a derivative, for example, the, the same as any mail services. They exist because you have the real economy. And uh, that's the thing which they don't understand. They are that stupid. They are that incompetent because they have all those soft degrees and all this bourgeois thing they think that yeah let's elect macron sure elect macron not that marine le pen uh, if she will would be elected she will make much difference because the process the gangrene went so deep went so far that you cannot change anything you cannot fix it something else is coming up and that's what i'm saying the pitchforks times uh, are they coming for europe it's not excluded I'm not saying that it's highly probable, but there they, it is probable. Will there will be situa Will there will deter will there be the deterioration of the food uh, situation? Oh, absolutely! It's already ongoing, and the fact that United States now draws on its strategic reserves, oil strategic reserves, and then sells the strategic reserve of oil to Europe, it's just absolute madness. I mean, it's, uh, and we can see it both in grocery stores when we go in because the prices are ticking up, 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 up all the time. We go to the gas station and the gas prices are just stunning. And of course now we have the real estate.
And now many Americans, well, actually more than half of Americans, they say they will never own anything because they cannot afford it. Of course they cannot afford it. You know, the prices in real estate are just absolutely, uh, I mean, crazy. And that's the only value. This is the only ta tangible where the capital in the United States now tries to hide. So what we have here, we have the unfolding gigantic economic crisis, which probably will make at some point of time uh, uh, the Great Depression, you know, look like a stroll in the park. I'm not saying it will necessarily happen. Don't quote me on that. But the probability does exist. And it's not a trivial probability. So, and it's all, if you look attentively at it, and uh, if you really uh, begin to kind of... Uh, uh, connect the dots, if you wish. It is all connected to the situation in Ukraine, because West already sustained a horrendous defeat there. And returning back to uh, Alex Christoforo, um, who been saying this uh, uh, in the, his last video about the fact that apart from this matters in Europe, he looks like that Europe will be paying for the Ukraine. I am on record for eight years that the main thing which Russia uh, pursued in Ukraine for eight years was trying to avoid to invade it, but when she did, from the get-go, the main issue was who would be paying for this black hole of a country. And most likely, this will be this ramp around Kyiv and to the western Ukraine, which will be left as independent Ukraine, and it will be indeed cut out from the all sources of energy and will be reduced to pretty much agricultural uh, uh, country. And uh, yeah, Europe, European Union, will be paying for restoration of it. So Russia will take the rest of it uh, in terms of uh, southern uh, Ukraine, including Odessa maybe, and making this uh, bridge, land bridge with the Trans Transnistria, and probably, probably will move towards... Um, take Kharkov and probably Dnepropetrovsk, which is called now Dnepr, what have you. So that's about it, you know. I mean, Russia doesn't need th those people on her balance, but we'll see. Again, phase two is ongoing, it is very uh, uh, successful, and no matter what e you or whoever, NATO, they try to pretend that they help uh, and, s s you know, uh, send those weapons to uh, Ukraine, it doesn't matter, they will be annihilated. And uh, just pointing out to this uh, 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 hyperlink to, uh, to my blog, go there and you will see uh, the interview with uh, Mr. Yuri Borisov, who is the first vice premier, uh, premier of uh, Russian Federation, uh, responsible for military industrial complex and the generally high tech sector. And read this attentively, it's uh, 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 it also hyperlinked to original in the RT. And there he explains why Russia will not run out of uh, uh, high precision stand of weapons. And that will be very interesting read, believe me. So, but then again, when you look people uh, look at people like uh, Scholz or von der Leyen, they don't know the, oh, for that matter, Biden or his team, they don't understand the size of economy and what real economy is. So, and West, in this case, miscalculated tremendously. Now, the last question of the day. People ask me already several times, is Sarmat RS-28, this ballistic missile, a big deal? Yes. It is gigantic deal, actually. It is the weapon which uh, world have never seen before, and it gets its IOC, initial operation capability, pretty much this coming uh, autumn. Uh, they say the first uh, units will be delivered to the frontline uh, 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 strategic missile forces already in September or October. Don't quote me on that, but it, it's, it's autumn. And people say, oh, is it a big deal? Well, Sarmat... Uh, in and of itself, yes, it's a big deal, obviously, because this missile has no really uh, range uh, limitations and can fly over whatever the pole you want, you know, fly around the earth and, you know, strike what, what have you. Doesn't really matter. It is the fact that Russia produces a plethora of their weapons, dual, both conventional and uh, nuclear, which make this whole revolution of military affairs, of which I write for so many years, and I have a book dedicated to it, that, uh, yeah, it's a completely new military paradigm. And that means only one thing, that uh, no matter what the West does, even if it contemplates some kind of um, uh, 
uh, uh, war against Russia, well, in nuclear scenario, it will be done no matter what. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, anti-missile defense they want to uh, build or what have you, new weapons. Or You just cannot intercept, you cannot really track this uh, missile, especially when you really look at the anti-ballistic missile defenses, which are still very ineffective. They might, may actually, intercept maybe one, two, three ballistic missiles, but salvo of ballistic missiles with the uh, multiple uh, independent re-entry vehicles, I mean, come on, I mean, there is no nothing like that in the United States or anywhere in the West. So, and they were all, all facing Russia, really, in terms of uh, the, if you look at the United States, it was the North, uh, transpolar uh, North Pole uh, trajectories, and a little bit to the West, you know. Uh, and uh, same was uh, true and still is true somewhat to, uh, uh, for Europe, but uh, if you can fly it from the other side, I mean, yeah, just basically if I don't see things and, you know, I don't see the enemy approaching me from behind, he can easily kill me by, you know, stabbing me in the back. That's what Sarmat does. But then again, don't forget, there are so many new of them, including already uh, combat proven uh, Kinshal that, and of course Zircon now being uh, uh, deployed to uh, actual uh, naval ships. So this is a plethora of weapons. This is the deterrent which is designed to not only change now, which Russia is open about it, uh, world order, but it also will make sure that we're not getting into the hot nuclear war. No matter how those crazes in Washington DC among neocons and liberal interventionists are thinking they can win it. They cannot. And again, they are incompetent. They don't understand what real war is. And if you want to demonstration of the utter incompetence and sophomoric um, uh, approach to all this, just watch any mainstream uh, American uh, cable news channel. Uh, you, be it CNN, Fox, what have you, you have those talking heads of all those generals and they spew an absolute amateur BS and uh, as my friend Larry Johnson, who is actually a very big time professional, you know, a CIA analyst and uh, State Department, he correctly stated in one of his wonderful pieces that he quoted like this. When he was uh, speaking about deception operations and uh, about uh, all those uh, supposedly, you know, Shaigu or heart attacks and 20 Russian generals being, uh, you know, arrested and things of this nature. And of course, Russians feeding the, uh, uh, you know, basically uh, fake info about uh, military operation. Well, Larry Johnson concluded with this wonderful phrase, one of his excellent articles. Well, looks like Russia was feeding the Western allies a big load of bullshit. Yes, and the same was happening with the economic development. Not that Russians were not saying this, but they were saying it to people who obviously never had their instrument, mental, intellectual instruments to grasp what was going on. And that is a systemic uh, failure of the both educational and analytical, uh, you know, uh, faculties of the combined West. But again, I didn't say anything new here. I just wanted to uh, kind of review this whole situation for you today and um, I think so that will be my last point for today. As always, those who can afford, please uh, uh, support me on the Patreon and subscribe to my uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. And I really want to thank my patrons again. Uh, guys, I will name you very soon again, you know, many of you who support me. And I really appreciate really your uh, support. Without it, I wouldn't be able to make those videos, these videos for that matter. So, well. That's it for today, guys, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.